Thanks for choosing Dyquil. Before we get started, please don't forget to like, subscribe, comment and share. It is really important. Hit that notification button as well, because there are loads more videos coming. You can get more detail about Dyquil and our courses at our website at mydyquil.com. Please enjoy this video. There are three main categories for computer networks that describe their size and the type of connectivity that they have. These are local, metropolitan, and wide area networks, LAN, MAN, and WAN. All network types exist to interconnect computer devices and to share information and resources across them. A local area network, which is often shortened to the acronym of LAN or LAN, is a computer communications network that interconnects various devices within a confined local area such as a single office building, or group of adjacent buildings that you might find in a school or university campus. A metropolitan area network, which is often shortened to MAN, is a computer communications network that interconnects various devices within a geographic region. The term MAN is used to describe a network that connects devices across a city, and it is often a collection of interconnected LANs. A metropolitan area network can provide uplink services to a WAN. A wide area network, which is often referred to as a WAN, joins multiple networks and locations across a large geographic area. A WAN could be global. The largest no WAN is the internet. The World Wide Web. Okay. So let's look a bit closer at network architecture. There are several different configurations. A bus network is relatively simple to configure, and it takes minimal cabling. The disadvantage of this topology is that if one device fails and the bus gets broken, then all of the downstream devices will go offline. A star network topology is one that has a central hub and the connected devices radiate from that hub. If a device fails, then none of the other devices are affected. However, if the central switch fails, then everything will go offline. A tree network topology is a hybrid in which multiple star networks are interconnected with a bus network. If one device fails, then generally the others remain unaffected. If a single switch fails, then all of the devices connected to that switch will go offline, but the other star networks will be unaffected. A ring network is one where each device is connected to the next, and the last is connected to the first. This topology introduces redundancy in itself, because data can travel in either direction. Any device or link failure will mean that the data will only flow in one direction. In a fully connected network topology, all devices are connected to each other. If one device fails, then all of the other devices remain unaffected. If a communications link fails, then an STP will organize an alternative path. Power over Ethernet, or PoE, is a method of providing power to attached devices over the same network cable as the Ethernet data. The term PoE refers to several standards, which are 802.3 AF, which is 15.4 watts. 802.3 AT, which is 30 watts. 802.3 BT, which is 90 watts. Using PoE provides a saving on installation and power costs because there is no need to supply and install separate power cables, and having an integral PSU also reduces costs. Open System Interconnection, often abbreviated to OSI, is a standard reference model for communication between two end users on a network. It characterizes and standardizes communications within a network computer system. OSI makes a diverse range of computer systems interoperable. There are seven layers within the OSI model that help us visualize where functions are taking place within the system. OSI Layer 7 is Application. This is anything in the system that can be classed as an application. These are the programs that process the data and allow users to interface with the system. For example, a web browser sits in layer seven. Layer six of the OSI model is presentation. This represents an area that processes data to transform it from one format to another. For example, the process within a system that translates data from an application format to a networking format. OSI Layer 5 is Session. This is the area within the model that deals with facilitating the communication between two devices. 
Layer 4 is the transport layer and it coordinates data transfer between systems and devices. OSI Layer 3 is network. This is where the routers sit within the model. This layer represents data forwarding to different routers and finding the most efficient path between two devices. Layer 2 is data link. This is the area within the model that provides point-to-point -point data transfer. OSI Layer 1 is the physical layer. This is anything tangible that is on the network. For example, the cable, connectors, wireless links, power connections, etc. When one manufacturer's products adhere to the OSI model, connection to other manufacturer's products becomes relatively simple. So, now let's look at some network components. A media converter is a network device connection that changes one data transmission method to another. Media converters support different protocols and different cabling types. A network switch is a device that connects other devices together on a computer network by switching packets of data to receive or forward to a different destination device. Switches offer efficient and intelligent data transfer. Routers are the smartest and potentially most complex network devices available in that they carry out data traffic directing functions. Routers offer intelligent data management and the ability to route traffic between different networks and subnetworks. Okay. There is one last thing to consider when talking about system network infrastructure. And that is bandwidth. The term network bandwidth refers to the maximum data transfer rate of a network or internet connection. Bandwidth calculations measure how much data can be sent over a specific connection in a given time. As you can see in this example, data is measured in bits and bytes per second. One byte of data is made up from 8 bits. A data bit is a binary 1 or 0. For example, a byte of data might look like this. Take a CCTV camera system as an example. 12 HD IP cameras dependent on image resolution and image rate, might require 5 megabits per second bandwidth each, requiring a total of 60 megabits per second. Therefore, and not accounting for any other network devices that might use the link, a fast Ethernet connection would suffice. This diagram illustrates how bandwidth requirements build up in a network. This module explores the many different architectures of network topology, and demonstrates how each builds on resilience and capability as they get more advanced, Visualizing how a computer network operates is a difficult task that has been simplified by the OSI model. This is a virtual structure of seven layers, each fulfilling a function within the network environment. Some common network hardware is also explored within this module, and we can see what each one does, and what advantages, or disadvantages, they might have. And finally, in conclusion to this module, is the importance of bandwidth and how it can accumulate on a network. You can get the full details of this subject matter from the DiQual module, SF205. You can find us for free online. Search for DiQual. As well as our website, you can find more videos and information on YouTube. Facebook. Instagram. And Twitter. Wherever you find us. Please don't forget to like us, share us, subscribe and comment. It is important to us so that we can produce more online content. Thank you.